Communities all across Iowa are engaging in conversations about how best to prepare our learners for life and success in the 21st century. We have had the good fortune in Iowa to have the expertise of Dr. Tony Wagner from Harvard University who has written a very impressive book called The Global Achievement Gap in which he explains that even the best schools right now are not preparing students for what they need for success in this century. So Tony, I'd like to uh, have a conversation with you about what civic leaders and parents and people who are concerned about Iowa's children need to support in our educational future. So Tony, what do you see as the challenges for Iowans as we prepare our students for a better future? You know, Troyce, Iowa has long enjoyed a reputation as being one of the highest performing states in terms of education in the country. The problem today is that what was good for 25 years ago is mm -hmm. not good enough in this rapidly changing world. What I've come to understand is that, first of all, all students need new skills for careers, college, and citizenship. The skills that students need to get and keep a good job this are the same skills they'll need for lifelong learning and active and informed citizenship. And we are neither testing nor teaching those skills even in our very best schools. And that's only half the problem. The other half of the problem is that this generation, whom we call the net generation, is very differently motivated to learn and to work. So what citizens need to understand is that while Iowa has graduated 80% of its kids in the past, to throw away 20% of our children just right from the start is totally unacceptable. Those students will not even get a minimum wage job in today's economy. And you fast forward a few years and you understand that there will be more jobs requiring at least an associate's degree than there will be students who have those degrees in the coming years. Why? Because one out of every two students, choice who starts college never completes any degree at all. And this is invisible. We're not tracking this information. Most folks do not know what their high school graduation rate is. Even fewer folks know the percentage of students who go on to post-secondary and succeed. So these are the accountability measures about children's lives and our economic future that citizens of this state need to pay attention to. How should schools look different? What should we be doing differently? to prepare every child for success as a learner, earner, and citizen. Well, this is, again, where I think communities play a vital role. I deeply believe that communities need to work together to define the new outcomes, mm. the new goals for graduation from high school. What should a young person know and be able to do to succeed in today's world? And I define what I call the seven survival skills, but let's just start with critical thinking. Every employer whom I've interviewed, from the service to manufacturing to the military to high tech, says that they really need every employee to think continuously about how to improve their product, their process, or their service, to think critically and to be a problem solver. But when I go into classrooms, it's fewer than one in 20 where I actually see any form of critical thinking going on at all. That's what I mean by the global achievement gap. It's the gap between what we're teaching and testing. And by the way, speaking of testing, there's no test for critical thinking skills in Iowa. The Iowa test of basic skills doesn't tell us anything about whether or not a student knows how to think critically or communicate effectively. And yet these are the coins of realm in the 21st century global knowledge economy. So it is up to communities, I believe, to redefine the outcomes that matter most. It can no longer be simply a sequence of courses mm -hmm. where students kind of sit and get. That isn't working for the kids and it isn't working for the economy. We have to define a set of core competencies that our students need. We have to become much better at teaching and assessing those competencies, as indeed other countries are doing, who are far outpacing us. And then we're going to have to make education much more interactive, because that's what this generation demands. You mentioned critical thinking as one of the seven survival skills. What are some of the others that we ought to be fostering in the kids? Collaboration across networks and leading by influence is the second skill that emerged through my interviews and research. Agility and adaptability is yet another. Uh, initiative and entrepreneurialism. Uh, the ability to access and analyze information, to communicate effectively, and most importantly, interestingly, curiosity and imagination. Now let me be clear, these are the new survival skills that are in addition to the habits of the heart that we know have always been important 
empathy, moral courage, a strong work ethic. And these are qualities that, you know, Iowans value it understandably and appropriately. But let's be clear, students can graduate with a strong heart, but if they don't have a strong head, they're not going anywhere in today's world. So talk a little bit about what, a, what we move from in a traditional classroom to. We, we, you and I were in a meeting recently where we heard a prominent Iowa business leader say what he looks for in the people he hires is more about critical thinking than GPA. Some people might hear that as, oh, the basics don't matter anymore. Of course they do, but how can we move from what was a traditional effective system 25 years ago to one that's very different now? What's, what would be different now in a classroom mm -hmm. from what was happening well, then? Let me contrast um, two different kind of learning systems, if I will, and learning goals. Schools traditionally have been organized to transmit knowledge, what I call timeless learning, mastering the core knowledge that has stood the test of time. And that continues to be important. It still matters that students have cultural literacy, that they know things. But that's no longer good enough because in the 21st century, it doesn't matter what you know because what we know is changing constantly, growing exponentially, and on any internet connected device. So it's not what you know anymore. It's what you can do with what you know. Mm -hmm. So there's timeless learning over here, but there is what I call just-in-time learning as a set of skills over here. So the best schools that I have seen and profiled in my book, The Global Achievement Gap, focus on both. Mm -hmm. They're using rich and challenging academic content. They're thinking very carefully about what kind of knowledge is foundational but they're using it to develop core competencies. So mastery of content is not the goal of the curriculum. It's a means to an end. We're using rich and challenging content to master core competencies. So for example, all students will have a digital portfolio in the schools that I've seen, where they have to show mastery or proficiency of communication and critical thinking skills. All students have to do a work-based internship, where they can successfully demonstrate that they know how to perform well in the adult world. All students have to do a service learning project, many of which are done in teams, so that we can see the extent to which students can really think about how to give back to the community. So these are just some of the kinds of examples. Uh, very differently organized schools as well. For the most part, these schools are much smaller. Uh, they, smaller units within larger schools where teams of teachers have shared responsibility for a group of students over time. And the teachers are not thinking, oh, I taught that to get the kids to pass the test. They're thinking, how do we ensure that 100% of our kids graduate and that every single one of them graduates career, college, and citizenship ready? You've been real supportive of our efforts in Iowa to have conversations about this across our whole state. And as we think about civic leaders and parents engaging in these conversations, what would you challenge them to think about in terms of how we could support this work or uh, encourage it more? Well, that, that's a really important question. I think the first thing we have to do as the elders, if you will, is set aside our notions of what is a good school. And, and that's very hard to do. Very often, we want schools to look like the ones we went to, and we teach the ways in which we were taught. And we have to understand that this is about not incremental improvement, but about reinvention, not reform. Now, people think that's kind of utopian, but I need to remind Iowans that you guys reinvented your schools about 125 years ago as we transitioned from a rural agrarian economy to an urban industrial society. We reinvented the one-room schoolhouse mm -hmm. into the factory model assembly line schools that we have 100 years later virtually unchanged. Mm -hmm. Those schools worked for that time in history and those kinds of kids. Those are not the kids we have today. This is not the world we have today. So it's going to take some courage, I think, for communities to come together. First of all, setting aside any form of blame. This is not a fix the teacher program. This is a community coming together to really reassess the goals that matter most. What does it mean to be an educated adult in the 21st century? And then letting educators figure out how to get there. But first, empowering the community with a clear sense of goals and, and a sense that educators need a different kind of support. And it isn't just about test scores. Tony, thank you so much. Uh, you've given us much food for thought. And 
We Iowans are serious about providing the best educational opportunities possible for children. We'll need all of us to accomplish this. So as you have your community conversations, please know that we need to change so kids can be successful learners, earners, and citizens. Thank you very much.